good morning students my name is chsv prasad rao and i am working as senior lecturer in electrical department at uh, government polytechnic yadirkutta in uh, uh, today we will discuss the uh, lesson ac motor in this in this uh, lesson we will continue the with the chapter 4 that is characteristics of three phase induction motors in the last class we covered working principle of three phase induction motor working and working of three phase induction motor on on no load and on load so we have covered in the last class so you know the construction also completed you know uh, in a induction motor we have uh, two parts the main major two parts are one one is starter and another one is rotor the stationary part is called stator so it is the outermost surface of the machine it contains internal slots where it contains the stator winding and the rotating part is called rotor it is there on the shaft so there are two types of rotors squirrel case rotor and phase wound rotor so if you see the working of a three phase induction motor the essential parts of three phase induction motor are as mentioned earlier stationary part known as stator and rotating part known as rotor when three phase stator winding is given to a three phase supply then what happen a rotating magnetic field of constant magnitude and rotating at synchronous speed is produced what is the synchronous speed ns is equal to 120 f by p this rotating flux passes through the air gap and cuts the stationary rotor conductors so then what happens due to relative speed between the rotating flux and stationary rotor conductors an emf is induced in the conductors according to faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction what are the faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction when a conductor cuts the magnetic field or magnetic field cuts the conductor then an emf is induced so similarly due to the rel to motion between uh armature rotor conductor and uh, rotating flux an emf is induced in the rotor conductors the frequency of the induced emf is same as supply frequency its magnitude is proportional to the relative speed between the flux and uh, rotor conductors and its direction is given by fleming's right hand rule since the rotor conductors are in a closed circuit and has no external path to the induced current whose direction is given by lenz's law so that means when induced emf is induced in the rotor conductors and the rotor conductors are closed path then armature current starts through flows through the conductor and whose direction is given by lenz's law 
so in this case and it opposes the very cause produced by it in this case the cause which produced producing it is the relative speed hence relative speed hence to reduce the relative speed the rotor starts rotating in the same direction as the top stator flux and tries to catch it but it never happen why because suppose if the rotor catches the stator field or rotates at synchronous speed then the relative speed is zero when the relative speed is zero induced emf is zero when induced emf is zero the current also zero and there is no torque and no speed the motor stops so once the rotor falls back in speed the relative speed increases and again it picks up the feed likewise rotor tries to catch synchronous speed so the working principle or the torque developed in the rotor can be explained as let us assume the stator field is rotating in clockwise direction then consider the instant when the rotor is stationary then the relative motion of the rotor with respect to the stator is anti clockwise by applying fleming's right hand rule the direction of induced emf in the rotor is found to be forward observed to be towards the observer that is the induced emf in the rotor is found to be towards the observer so hence the direction of the because of this when the rotor can uh, when the rotor carries the current then flux is produced around the rotor which is in anti clockwise direction now here we have now at present there are two fluxes there stator flux and the rotor flux by combining the two fluxes the field strength on the left hand side left and weakened on the right hand side of the conductor the property of the magnetic line is to so so what happen on the right hand side of the conductor both the rotor flux and the stator flux are opposite direction to each other so the resultant flux is reduced whereas on right hand side the rotor flux and stator flux are in the same same direction as a result the field is strengthened the but uh, the property of magnetic lines is to travel in a straight line due to this property of the flux it tries to travel in a straight line and pushes the rotor conductor towards right that is clockwise then each conductor experience a force in clockwise direction hence the rotor is set to be rotate in the same direction as the top stator flux so hence the above discussion is clear that the induction motor is self starting motor so and the rotor of the induction motor never rotates at synchronous speed always it rotates at the speed less than synchronous speed so here we have 
one more term that is slip so the slip is defined as the the difference between synchronous speed ns of the stator of the stator rotating field and the actual speed nr is called slip speed and if it is expressed in terms of synchronous speed then it is called slip percentage of slip so when the synchronous motor is on no load it rotates at a maximum speed but it is less than synchronous speed so when we apply a load on the motor then its rotor then its speed reduces again if you apply again it reduces so likewise the speed of the rotor decreases when you apply the load so this this is we covered in the last class so today so today we will check the power stages in induction motor that is when we give the input what is the output what is the relation between output and the losses in the motor to understand the power stages for a motor so which energy we are giving for a motor we are giving the input as electric energy and we are getting the output as mechanical energy and we will cover also the relation between torque power and slip and slip so let us see power stages in induction motor stator iron losses what are the losses it has stator iron losses which consist of eddy current losses and stress losses that depends on the supply frequency and the flux density in the core so these losses are constant why because the frequency is constant and the flux density in the core is constant so these losses are constant the iron losses of the core is negligibly small because the frequency of the rotor current under normal condition is always small so in the last class we derived that one also the frequency of the rotor current fr that is denoted with fr the frequency of the rotor current is equal to s into f that is slip into frequency slip into multiply with frequency so it is always very less 1.5 like that so that's why as the iron losses depends on the frequency so rotor iron losses depends on rotor frequency which is less so rotor iron losses are neglected so next one is next losses are rotor copper losses that is 3i2 square r2 so these are the losses that is the stator iron losses and rotor copper losses so different power stages in the induction motor are so here it shows the horizontally the flow of the power horizontal flow of the power so this is motor input that is given to the stator from this if we remove stator iron and copper losses from motor input if you remove stator iron and copper losses then we can get rotor input 
from this rotor input if you remove the rotor copper losses then we can get mechanical power developed in the rotor this is also called gross power and from this if you remove windage and iron friction and windage losses then we can get rotor output understood this once again i am re repeating the input we are giving to the motor is given to the stator so the stator input or motor input both are same from this stator input if you remove the stator copper losses and iron losses then we can get rotor input from this rotor input from this rotor input if you remove rotor copper losses then we can get then we can get gross power or mechanical power developed in the rotor from this if you remove friction and windage losses then we can get the rotor output or motor output so power stages in synchronous motor this it is also same thing the same thing it is showing here the motor power input from this if you remove stator iron and copper losses we can get rotor input from this if you remove rotor copper losses we can get mechanical power developed from this if you remove friction and windage losses then we can get motor output so what is a motor input motor input is the combination of rotor input plus stator copper losses and iron losses again the rotor input two parts it is a combination of rotor copper losses plus mechanical power developed so again mechanical power developed is from this mechanical power output power develop if you remove friction and windage losses we can get motor output it is showing the power stages in the vertical direction so that means once again i am repeating from power input motor input or stator input from this if you remove stator iron and copper losses then we can get rotor input from this rotor input if you remove rotor rotor copper losses then we can get mechanical power developed from this mechanical power developed if you remove friction and windage losses then we can get motor output so power distribution diagram of a induction motor the power input is denoted with p1 whereas stator and iron losses pcs and pi if you remove this losses stator copper losses and iron losses then we can get rotor input p2 from this if you remove rotor copper losses then we can get mechanical power developed pm or gross rotor output pg from this if you remove friction and windage losses that is pw then we can get rotor output or motor output so this is the where it is found uh, this shows the input where we are giving we are giving the input to a 
the terminal box that in terminal box the three binding of this is the state r the state r contains inner uh, slots on the inner periphery this is the state r binding so here the state r binding is brought out terminals and they are kept in the terminal box to this terminal box we will give the power input so from this if you remove state r copper losses and state r iron losses then we can get the power which is going from state r to rotor that is p2 power input to rotor so this is the rotor we are giving the power input in this if you remove rotor copper losses then we can get the power available the gross mechanical power developed from this if you remove friction and bindage losses then we can get a shaft power that is the rotor output or motor output the power available at the shaft so if you see the torque developed by the motor and induction motor develops gross torque tg due to gross rotor output that is pm its value can be expressed either in terms of rotor input p2 or gross rotor output pm so pg is equal to p2 by omega s that is called p2 by 2 pi n s note down this gross torque tg is equal to p2 by 2 pi ns where ns is equal to synchronous speed or pm by 2 pi n where n is the rotor speed ns is the synchronous speed suppose if you are dividing with p2 so that is the rotor input then we have to divide with 2 pi ns synchronous speed suppose if you are divided with dividing with mechanical power developed or the then we have to divide with 2 pi n where n is the rotor speed so this is the gross rotor torque so the shaft torque tsh is due to output power which is less than pm because of rotor friction and windage losses the shaft torque tsh is due to motor output so which which is less than pm so shaft torque tsh is equal to motor output by 2 pi n where n is the rotor speed so the difference between shaft torque and gross torque is due to friction and windage losses in the motor so the difference between tg and tsh that is gross torque and shaft torque is equal to the the torque loss torque that is the loss torque that is due to friction and 
windage loss friction and windage loss in the motor in the above expression n and ns are in rps normally how is the speed n is there n is in rpm that is revolutions per minute but it is revolutions per second that means we have to divide the speed with 60 then we can get speed in rps however if they are in rpm the above expressions for the motor torque becomes c here every equation we have to divide with 60 here it is divided by with 60 that gone up 60 by 2 p 2 pi into that is p p2 by ds so that is called 9.55 so this is a 60 by 2 pi value this value is 60 by 2 pi value is 9.55 p2 by ps so similarly pm pm by 2 pi n pm by 2 pi n where n is the rotor speed so that is 60 by 2 pi n so that is 9.55 into pm by n next uh, shaft torque tsh is called output by 2 pi n by 60 that means if we so why we are putting by 60 suppose n is in rpm that is revolutions per minute then we have to divide speed divided by 60 then we can get this expressions so shaft torque is equal to 9.91 into 9.55 into output by n note down this torque relations and the torque values over this is important definitely he will get the we will get the problem on this one that is for 5 marks or 10 marks next one is torque mechanical power and rotor input so what is the stator input stator input is called stator output plus stator losses so that is uh, we we generated with the p2 p1 sorry p1 is equal to motor output plus stator losses the stator output is transferred entirely inductively inductively to the rotor circuit that means the stator output is transferred to the rotor circuit so the rotor input p2 is equal to stator output so the stator output is given to rotor input so p2 is equal to cos output So rotor gross output PM is equal to rotor input P2 minus rotor copper losses. So that is PM is equal to P2 minus rotor copper losses.
okay this is the figure uh, relation pm is equal to p2 minus rotor copper losses so this rotor output is converted into mechanical energy and gives rise to gross rotor torque so the rotor uh, the rotor gross output uh, the rotor output is converted into mechanical energy and gives to the gross torque tg that means the motor output is converted into mechanical energy and gives rise to gross torque so that is tg out of this uh, gross torque developed some is lost due to windage and friction losses in the rotor and the rest appears as the useful or shaft torque so out of this gross torque developed some is lost due to friction and windage losses in the rotor and the remaining power appears at the shaft that is useful shaft torque that is tsh so that is from tg is the gross torque from this tg if you remove the uh, loss that is the torque due to friction and windage losses then we can get tsh the torque available at the shaft so let n represents the actual speed of the motor and tz is in newton meter then tz into 2 pi n is equal to rotor output rotor output in watts so to get the rotor output in watts what we have to multiply we have to multiply tg gross uh, tg gross torque in newton meter and n is in rp s actually it is rpm rpm so we have to divide with 60 to get uh, rps so and the remaining uh, so the remaining gross rotor uh, the resultant gross rotor output is in kilowatts the torque the gross torque the gross torque the rotor gross output is in kilowatts is equal to pm by 2 pi n if there if if there were no copper losses in the rotor then the rotor output will be equal to rotor input and the rotor will runs at synchronous speed so tg is equal to rotor input that is equal to p2 by 2 pi ns what is p2 p2 is the rotor input so tg is equal to p2 by p2 by 2 pi ns where p2 is the rotor input tg is the gross torque ns is the synchronous speed so from this equations 1 and 2 the rotor gross output the rotor gross output pm is equal to tg into 2 pi n where tg is equal to gross torque and pm is equal to gross power 
and rotor input P2 is equal to Tg into 2 pi Tg into 2 pi Ns rotor input P2 P2 is equal to Tg into 2 pi Ns the difference of the rotor grass output and rotor input is equal to rotor copper losses so that is gross rotor output minus rotor input is equal to rotor copper losses so rotor copper losses is equal to p2 minus pm so that is equal to Tg into 2 pi n into ns minus n. Note down these formulas. These are important. Sometimes he will give for 5 marks and 10 marks. For derivation, he will give. Note down this. So from equation 3, this is P2 and this one, rotor input and rotor copper losses, 4. From equation 3 and 4, that means divide equation 4 and 3, 4 by 3, that is rotor copper losses by rotor input is equal to Ns minus n by ns so which is equal to yes which is nothing but a slip so rotor copper losses is equal to yes into rotor input so if you multiply the rotor input with slip we can get rotor copper losses so where rotor input is nothing but a power across air gap that is P2. So copper losses PC is equal to S into P2. So or similarly rotor input is equal to rotor copper losses by S. So rotor grass output PM is equal to motor input rotor input p2 minus rotor copper losses so that is called input minus rotor input minus s into rotor input take rotor input as common then that is 1 minus s into p2 so that is nothing but a gross power so gross power is equal to 1 minus s into p2 so this uh, 5 and 6 the equations 5 and 6 are useful in doing the problems and uh, for derivation also he will ask in the examination for 5 marks and 10 marks so Rotor grass output PM is equal to 1 minus S into rotor input P2. If we divide these two equations, then P2 by, then PM by P2 is equal to 1 minus S. Bring this P2 here. So PM by P2 is equal to 1 minus S. The but which is nothing but by n by n s rotor actual speed by synchronous speed that is p m by p2 is equal to n by n s which is nothing but a rotor efficiency is equal to n by n s where n r this is the 
rotor actual speed by synchronous speed that will give the rotor efficiency so rotor copper losses by rotor grass power output that is equation 4 and 5 if we divide like that then we can get s by 1 minus s rotor copper losses by gross rotor grass output is equal to s by 1 minus s so you what we have concluded from this what is the important point if some power p2 e is delivered to a rotor then part of it that is s into p2 e is lost in rotor itself as copper losses which are in the form of heat next the remaining power 1 minus s p2 is appears as gross mechanical power output that is pm which is which includes friction and windage losses so if you write these three motor input p2 is to mechanical power developed pm is to copper losses is equal to 1 is to 1 minus s is to yes so p2 is to sometimes he, he will ask like that derive the relation prove this one p2 is to pm is to pc is equal to 1 minus 1 is to 1 minus s is to yes he will give for 5 marks and 10 marks the derivation the rotor power will always divide it itself in this ratio and it is advantages to run the motor with a small as small as small as slip as possible so summary is we derived the torque equations that is tg tsh shaft torque gross torque gross torque tg and shaft torque tsh where tg is equal to 1.955 p2 by ns where p2 is the rotor input ns is the synchronous speed or 9.55 into pm by n where pm is the mechanical power developed at the shaft and n is the rotor speed similarly shaft torque tsh is equal to 9.55 into p output by n where n is the rotor speed so 9.55 into p output by n and what we proved we proved that gross rotor output pm is equal to 1 minus s into rotor in that is p2 and if you divide gross output by rotor input is equal to 1 minus s which is nothing which is nothing but a n by ns rotor speed by synchronous speed the examination point of view these are the frequently asked questions draw the power flow di power stages in induction motor this is he will give for five marks and next question is derive an expression between torque power and slip so these two questions 
he will ask in the examination so read this so that you can answer able to answer these two questions if you have any doubt ask me in the next class so it is a derivation we have to practice two three times then only we can able to write in the examination note down the questions these two questions so we have derived today relations between torque and the power and the how the power is divided between the input and mechanical power developed and rotor copper losses that is p2 is to pm is to pc is equal to 1 is to 1 minus s is to s he will give derivation or problem on this one also so read this one if you have any doubts ask me in the next class okay thank you